Cycle Madhouse Radio, your home to everything biker, biker news and discussions of the day, and now, the Motorcycle Madhouse Mayhem Evening Show with James Hollywood Machikari, Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, only on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and all major podcasting platforms. Bookmark Motorcycle Madhouse Radio on your favorite mobile app now. Rock on! What's up, everyone? How you doing? It's one of them shows today. Hey, Corey Graff has a new podcast up. He discussed everything. He's doing a damn good job, man. Corey Graff from the Wall of Shame. I'm going to put a link in the description box for his podcast. Make sure you guys get over there and uh, check it out, man. He's a good freaking guy trying hard to get into the business. So, you know, give him some damn support, will you, over there, you damn hooligans. Anyway, we got a bunch of news today, as always. But I wanted to start out doing something here. My God, with the emails. You know, I really didn't think it was that bad that people couldn't get on the damn bike you know throw your leg over turn on the bike crack the throttle and go for a damn ride my god what is it with everybody that you have to start questioning what other clubs do just get out there and ride for christ's sakes but anyway i was talking to bd because I've been getting these emails, uh, and we all know the story about a guy that was a correction officer, a cop in a freaking one percenter club. And I go to you know him, I was like, what's it freaking matter to everybody? It's their damn brotherhood. Now, do I approve of cops in a club? No. I've never been for that. But what the hell does it matter to you? Why make it such a big deal? It's their club, they're doing what they want, it's their brother, and it's actually none of your damn business. And you sure to hell don't have to email me about it. Hey, can you cover this story? We already covered it. And I said that different sets within the scene do things different than the others. A lot of one percent clubs in the white scene, you won't see that. Well, you know, I'm I'm talking about the true one percent clubs. Uh, usually don't do that stuff. Have I seen it done? Yes, I've seen it done. There's a club on the East Coast that's a real well known one percenter club that had a ex cop, cop, whatever the hell it is. But again, it's their club. Now I know there's a lot of haters that do these freaking uh, hater pages that hide behind everything. They don't show who they are. Some of these guys that run these sites have been in three or four clubs and they're like, they don't think we know. We know. It's as simple as that. But they go out and cause trouble. And you get these freaking underlings that follow these idiots and don't know who the hell they're following. They are causing problems within the scene, but hey, that's up to the MCs to deal with, not you. If you're not wearing a patch, why do you care? What is this, high school? Seriously, you know, are you grown men? Are you a bunch of freaking high school cheerleaders that have to point out, oh, look at this club, look at that club. Are they supposed to be giving protocol advice if they're a part of the club? I thought you're not supposed to have that. Jesus, schoolgirls, man. Uh, how do you guys even call yourselves a biker if you're worrying about what other people do? That's where the internet has screwed every damn thing up. Me, I cover biker news. What's happening in the scene? It's all public record what I cover. Everything is either off the wire, or I'll look up some stories. It's already there in the public. I don't make up biker news. And that's one of the things I really, and I told BD, I was like, damn, man. 
with uh, everybody getting involved in everybody else's business? How do you do it with this protocol stuff? Everybody has a different opinion, blah, blah, blah. And he, you know, he was like, yeah, <laughs> we should get into more fun stuff like moto vlogging. Uh, you just get less headaches. Less headaches. I'm not going to speak for him, but it's like, go out, ride your bike, go get laid. That's the way it used to be. But now it is. Don't ride your bike, stay on the internet, and gossip like a little freaking schoolgirl. It is everybody's choice of what they want to watch or they want to listen to. I'm not going to sit there and say one guy is wrong, the other guy is wrong, because I have a focus on one thing that I'm doing, and I don't like answering the questions. I, I, you know what? I'll be serious, and if anybody's ever sent me questions about this protocol crap, I send them to BD. And I don't mean to say, you know, po protocol crap, but it's gotten to the point where it's obviously freaking stupid stupid now with the way people ask about it why are you going to go to a guy that does biker news focuses on the news part of the scene for protocol advice after he's already said time after time after time don't ask me because all i'm going to do is send you to somebody else again when you're talking protocol, you're talking about different sets, have different ways of doing things. The only way you're going to learn anything, anything, is to go meet the people. Now, I got smart ass over on one of the hater channels, well, and I've answered this question already. Why do you send people to BD? For the last time, he was a former national president of an MC that is well respected and he had chapters open up all over the United States had to deal with 1% clubs getting blessings and you know s fixing everything if there was problems he dealt with the people and he knows that protocol is local so, if your national president dealing with all this kind of stuff like he had to, yeah, he had to know different ways of how it works in different sections of the country. So, why would I send somebody over to somebody else that don't have that experience? It's common freaking sense, ain't it? Well, I guess common sense really isn't freaking used a lot anymore. If you guys seen some of the stuff that comes across my email, you'd be like shaking your heads too. I know the graybeards would. And I also find it funny when I did that one poll last year or the year before and only 30% supported clubs, you guys sure are spending a lot of time, especially you club haters, talking about clubs. If you don't like them, then why the hell are you asking about them? Wouldn't you want to spend your time riding your motorcycle, going out partying, going camping, sleeping uh, freaking with a nice honey next to you that's a warm body, than spending all your time causing crap on the net? I, you know what? Another thing. I do not care what others say about me the show or what other channels say this or that about the show guess what we're in the public eye it you got to get a thick skin it really don't matter after i do the shows throw them on the radio guess what i do i usually go for a ride and party i leave it behind I love doing it, but it ain't my entire damn life. No, hell, if this was my entire life, I'd be doing this stuff 24 hours a day. And I know I'm kind of coming off like a dick right now. And I understand a lot of people that are just buying bikes 
and they want to go ride with something, be a part of something, I get it. I really do. But you got to go out and actually, actually meet some people. Go to some bike nights. Go to some open clubhouse uh, nights. Go to a bar if you want to hang out with people. Go to big rallies, man. Get to know the scene. Just because you buy a bike doesn't mean you have to freaking be a part of a club. And I can guess a lot of these people, a lot of them, are spending a lot of time on the internet trying to be a part of something instead of actually riding. They're going to different channels hoping to get some kind of insight. You're not leaving your damn house doing that. You're not getting out there learning anything. You're trying to live through other people's experiences. And bikers are all about getting out there, doing their thing, being themselves, not somebody else. I would rather have a nice honey, a warm body sitting next to me after a big night of freaking 420 and partying, bonfires, than sitting around on a computer asking people freaking stupid questions. Real stupid questions. And rounding back to should one percenter clubs have cops in them or CEOs? Well, let me tell you about a CEO. That's a correction officer. I know some clubs or some organizations have them around. And you want to know why? And if you don't, then you have no business even asking about this kind of crap. Again, what you're seeing on the internet does not correlate with what's going on on the street. But do you know how valuable, valuable a CEO is? Now, I can already uh, <laughs> suspect there's going to be dumb comments on this one or dumb emails. But if you got brothers in a joint in prison, oh, those CEOs become very valuable. Very. And if you can't figure out what I'm trying to say with that, you're dumb. So if a club decides they want to have a CEO, somebody without arresting powers, in their club, that's on them because they're probably p playing a smart game right there. I know in the gangs, we used to have COs all the damn time around us. And that was for a couple purposes. Again, if you can't figure that out, that's on you. So, this ain't just motorcycle clubs that have COs in them. Cops are a little different because they got the arresting powers, and you can never trust a damn cop. But a CEO is all, you know what? The game that you can play with a CEO is beyond belief, and it starts with an E. And you know what? There's things that you can do that, hey, you got complete control because they cross that line. So when I see people asking me a question, well, this guy's club had a cop in it. Again, it's on them. And if it's a CO, they're probably smarter than you are to do it. Now, do I know anybody that actually joined a club that was a CO? Oh, I, yeah, I know a lot. So it's like, and I think the arresting powers part of it is the biggest issue. But to go bash on somebody's club, and I know which one you guys are bashing on. I already know. But again, if you step back and think about it, it's actually a smart freaking move. A real smart move on their part if they got guys in the joint. So stop being judgmental. Stop believing these damn sites that are hiding behind their uh, keyboard because they're too much of freaking cowards to show who they are. 
And again, I know a bunch of them and I know who runs them. And they're talking crap about clubs that they were a part of. And they were a part of three or four of them. So why would you listen to a site that is afraid to show who they are? Why are they hiding? Because they're cowards. Because they don't stand behind what they believe. They're afraid to go out on the streets. I'd be afraid to go on the streets after saying a bunch of crap like them assholes did. It's no wonder they stand behind and keyboard. But to go and bash these guys, and I've seen them already doing it. I've seen them on these sites bashing these clubs. There's two clubs that are being bashed right now. And both of them are pretty decent freaking clubs. You got to remember, this new age, you're talking a lot of bangers are coming up in the club scene. A lot of them. And bangers think a lot different than the average biker. It's always about the damn hustle. So if it's about the hustle, why wouldn't you get a CEO in your back pocket? And I already know major 1%er clubs got that. It, they might not be wearing their patch, but they got them in their pocket. If you think clubs don't deal with COs and Leos, you're a dumbass. You do not know the ways of the damn street. The street is totally different, guys, than what you're seeing here. Yeah, you see us cover biker news and what's happening here or there. That's not it. You know what? There's stories I won't even put out on the internet because I know it can have consequences on the street. A lot of the stuff I cover is from multi-platforms, meaning the story's already out there. Maybe if they, you know, want to give their side of the story on the situation, they can come on the show. We'll put their side out because I already know that it ain't going to happen with the other mainstream. I guess, you know what, it's been a long monologue, I get it. You know, and I got people that say, well, the show should be shorter and stuff. Well, it's a radio show, especially to the new subscribers on the YouTube and Facebook. I don't know how many times I hear that. It's a radio show. Our main platform, if you're watching on YouTube, look to the uh, left-hand side of me. It says Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, and all that. That's our main force. And yes, we're going to have an evening show coming out. And it's not going to all have to do with biker crap. That evening show on our uh, platforms is going to have to do with everything. Because I know bikers are just not stuck in this bubble and don't want to know what else is going on around this country or around the world. So... Yeah, we're going to have a longer type of deal on our videos because you're actually watching what I'm doing on Spotify or iTunes right now. This goes into audio. So my suggestion before we get into the news is again, throw your damn leg over the bike, turn the damn thing on, and hit the throttle. Go do what you think you want to do on the net, I guess. Go ride me, people, man. But damn, stop sending me them questions about these clubs accepting a CO. Learn what the hell this life's about if you're going to get into a club. It ain't all cookies and ice cream out there, guys and girls. Shit. Most girls have more freaking brains than the guys. They know the crap better than you guys sometimes. And I'm not trying to bash everybody. I'm just going after the guys that keep sending these stupid questions in. And then the guys that are sending the emails are all over the other damn platform saying the same thing causing trouble. 
If you have such a problem with it, go join a motorcycle club, throw a patch on your back, and see how you do in the real world. My God, man. I never thought I'd see it where the scene was a bunch of freaking girls crying and whining, causing drama, all that crap. So let's go into today's news. And... Uh Tommy Witherspoon, yeah, out of the Waco Tribune. Everybody knows I'm a fan of Tommy. He actually covered the Waco uh, Twin Peaks stuff from start to uh, finish, and he was always there to give both sides of the story. A Waco man who used his vehicle to strike a Waco attorney on a motorcycle after an argument at a fast food restaurant drive through last year pleaded guilty to aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Hell yeah, somebody's finally held accountable. Prosecutors recommended that Daryl Lynn Galloway, 46, be placed on felony deferred adjudication probation. What? So the guy ain't doing any time behind bars. You know, I go figure. Uh, Judge Ralph Struther of the 19th uh, State District Court will sentence Galloway in about two months after reviewing a background report compiled by probation officers. Galloway's attorney, Michael Dahlberg, did not return messages seeking comment on the case. So the guy tried to hit a guy. Oh, my God. Uh, he struck a motorcyclist, for Christ's sakes, man. And it's not getting any time. Go figure. There ain't no freaking justice in Waco. Waco police reported that Galloway and Waco attorney Seth Sutton got into a verbal altercation in March last year about 2.30 a.m. at Whataburger on Valley Mills Drive. Police initially said Galloway and Sutton got into an argument over how long Galloway was taken to order at the drive thru However, after Galloway's arrest a week later, sudden a criminal defense attorney said he made a general comment about the wait time at the restaurant that was not directed at anyone. He did not realize Galloway heard him, but they got into an argument. Quote, I wasn't directing the first initial comment at him because I know when things take a long time at a restaurant, it's not the patron's fault. But he thought I was directing it at him. Sudden said at the time he started barking at me and I started barking at him. But then it ended and I didn't think anything too big about it. Police said Galloway waited for Sudden to leave the restaurant on his motorcycle, followed him in his SUV, and struck him near Waco Drive in North 38th Street. And this guy ain't getting any damn time for it. He waited there to see if the guy was leaving and then he followed him. Felony frickin' probation? Are you cr you're kidding me? Sudden suffered bruised ribs and multiple abrasions, commonly called road rash. And him being a defense attorney, I hope he sues the hell out of this guy. Uh, Galloway fled the scene after striking Sudden's bike. Yeah, like a coward. Quote, having an accident with a car is scary enough for a biker, Sudden said after Galloway's indictment in March. But in a case like this where a car intentionally, intentionally runs down a motorcycle from behind, we are completely defenseless. I'm grateful that the district attorney's office took this important step in seeking justice. This is not justice. He's not behind bars. What's stopping him from doing it again to another motorcyclist? Felony probation? It makes the bikers in this community a little bit safer. And in that, we will take all the help we can get. Unfreaking real. Unreal. Anyway, let's go over to Australia. Or New Zealand. One of these two, man. You know what? God forbid you get that one wrong, man. They're going to get you. Common Chero's Cousins Appeal Conviction Sentence Over Execution Style Killing. Two cousins who denied their involvement in an execution-style uh, gang shooting that left a woman with a bullet lodged in her brain and her husband dead have had their appeals heard. Uh, on Thursday, 
uh, the suspect or the one who was convicted appealed his conviction. Uh, I ain't even trying to go with their friggin' names, man. You got some weird-ass names over there. Uh, appealed his sentence of life imprisonment with a minimum of 17 years. The pair were found guilty by a trial over the murder of Abraham to, oh, see what I mean? Hell no. And the attempted murder of his wife, Yolanda. Uh, they appeared uh, via video link from prison at the Court of Appeal on Thursday in front of Justice Patricia Courtney, Justice Edwin Willey, and Justice Matthew Muir. Uh, the judges reserved their decisions in April of 2018. Uh, the victim was lured to Greenwood uh, Road. Uh, for a potential drug deal there he was shot at least seven times and died within minutes it was a miracle his wife survived after she was shot multiple times in the head uh, the pair uh, was identified as the shooter and was sentenced to life imprisonment with a minimum of 17 and a half years uh, that over uh, the pond Comancheros now let's go up to Canada. Yeah, Canada's been really into the freaking news lately by Sheldon Speck, man. Uh, nice name. I bet he was freaking picked on as a kid. Uh, alleged Hells Angel Support Club members going to trial for home invasion, kidnapping incident. Two people charged in the alleged biker gang related home invasion and kidnapping incident in central Alberta two years ago will. Uh, go to trial later this year Kevin Michael Fix 37 and Joshua Bradley Nordorf of Red Deal are scheduled to have a court uh, of Queen's bench trial in Calgary December 7th through the 11th the pair were among four people charged initially after Didsbury RCMP responded to an incident in Olds on June 17 2018 your guys' system works as slow as ours, man. Uh, it was then uh, when a Mounties alleged a kidnapping and assault occurred with three suspects were accused of abducting two adult victims from the location and driving in their own vehicles to the Syndicate Motorcycle Clubhouse in Red Deer where one of them was assaulted. Police say the victims were then released and left the clubhouse. On June 29th, RCMP say three different suspects came to the same victim's resident in Didsbury and broke into the house before stealing the female victim's car and fleeing. Not good, man, not good. Uh, an in-depth investigation was launched by the RCMP utilizing assistance from Olds and Red Deer Red Deer and Calgary General Investigations uh, sections, the forensic identification, a whole bunch of them. Uh, information gathered by the RCMP reveals that the Syndicate Motorcycle Club in Red Deer is a support club for the Hells Angel Motorcycle Club Nomads chapter. They were arrested on the 2018 following their arrest. The search warrant was executed at their motorcycle clubhouse where evidence was seized for further examination. So there you go. They have charges up there for kidnapping home invasion. Now let's go to Corey Graff's Wall of Shame. Yes, the wall of shame, baby. Uh, this one uh, is about a week old because I had all the other ones I was going through, but very interesting here. Former Ontario officer arrested on 120 counts of unauthorized use of leads or leads. My fault. Uh, former Ontario police officer Elijah Finley was arrested on 120 counts of unauthorized use of law enforcement automated database system or leads according to the Richland County Courthouse. Finley, 31 of Ontario, was arrested Tuesday at his home on the counts all fifth degree felonies. He is scheduled to be arraigned at 1 p.m. Wednesday at the Richland County Courthouse before Magistrate Jeffrey P. Ulick. Finley remains in the county jail. And the Ontario Police Department said they had no comment. Let's go to uh, one more here. 
I am not interested in that. Uh, Virginia police officer arrested on drug possession charges. Hey, ain't that what you say uh, clubs do all the time? Anyway, Virginia Beach officer was arrested Tuesday on charges related to drug possession, according to the news release from the P police department. The officer, 24-year-old Hugo Diaz Rivera, was charged with seven counts of possession of a Schedule Three substance without a prescription. The Drug Enforcement Administration de uh, defies Schedule Three substances as drugs with a moderate to low physical and psychological dependence. Huh. When are you going to reclassify 420, man? Make it legal everywhere. The Code of Virginia says possession of such drug is a Class 1 misdemeanor. The police department said it received a tip about one of its officers early this year and conducted a criminal investigation. Diaz Rivera was placed on administrative assignment during the investigation. Information on the Virginia Beach Correctional Facilities website shows the offenses occurred before or between June 29 and January 2020. After his arrest, the police department uh, said Diaz Rivera was immediately suspended without pay. He has worked for the department since November 2018 in the Uniform uh, Patrol Division. The Drug Enforcement Administration is leading the criminal investigation with support from the Virginia Police Department. According to the records, the criminal investigation is ongoing. And that is Corey Grass Wallace Shame. We're going to go and take a look or hear about Hollywood's final thoughts right here, right after the... Carrie here from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. Just to let you know about the place that has the craziest hats on the market. Apparel that's based all upon bikers, baggers, and brotherhood. And ladies, we didn't forget about you either. Between tank tops and baby doll tees, we have it all. Now just go to BaggerSyndicateCycles.com and check it out. Mwah. Okay, here we go with my final thoughts. You know, expanding on my monologue from the beginning of the show. A biker, it's all about, yeah, the freedom. But more importantly, it's about getting on your damn bike and going the ride. There is no reason whatsoever to have to be involved in all this fucking he said, she said crap. Going on the internet, causing all kinds of problems, hiding behind all these damn sites, not showing who you are. Because quite frankly, you're nothing but a coward. And cowards are not bikers. You're yellow. That's what you are. You're yellow. And that is going out to the ones that write, you know, run these sites without showing who they are or running these videos, whatever it is. Because to me, it really don't matter. But I can see where it causes a lot of problems. And it misleads a lot of people, especially these new jacks, man, who just bought their bikes and want to be a part of something. I contend you're actually going to get them hurt with all your BS because do you think it just stops with their comments on your sites? Hell no, it doesn't. They go out on the street uh, rattling off what the hell you idiots who hiding behind a computer said and get their asses handed to them. I guess that's okay with you. And that's one of the biggest reasons why I've always thought that in order to join a club, you want to go out on the street and do it. Obviously, a lot has changed. I get that. I'm a dinosaur. A lot of guys older than me are dinosaurs. It's just not the way it used to be. But you don't have to make the scene in a, into a big high school drama play. If somebody wants somebody in their club and they believe they can be a brother then it's none of your damn business of what they're doing. Are you paying their dues? Are you paying for the expenses at their clubhouse? If not, what the hell does it matter what they are doing? I can bet you they are out there riding their motorcycles, partying, and enjoying their brotherhood. I already know. A lot of stuff that I just said is going to be taken out of context or, you know, you said this before, you said that before. Put your listening ears on. 
I hate to do it, but put your listening ears on just like a child because you're ignorant. If you cannot see why some of these clubs maybe have a CEO around them or members, well, you never dealt with inside the joint now, have you? No, you're probably a nice goody two shoe and pushing your beliefs on everybody else and then coming back because you've seen something stupid on a website and say, well, you're not supposed to have COs in your organization. That's where your ignorance shows. Your ignorance shows because you don't know reality. And if you don't know why it's important to have a CEO around your organization, why you have guys on the inside, you're very ignorant at that point. So I've seen some sites bashing these two clubs. They're bashing them. Like, ha, gotcha. You haven't got nobody, man. Because they're still riding. They're still doing their own damn thing. They don't care what you have to say. What, you think you're going to shame somebody on the internet and they're going to stop existing or being who they are because you're trying to shame them? No, it don't work that way. It never works that way because they can give a flying you-know-what about anything anybody says. Because, again, you're not a part of their brotherhood. You're not there standing behind them. You're not there again paying money to keep that brotherhood alive. You're just a nobody to them. A nobody. So why go and gossip? There ain't no sense in that damn thing. Yeah, you know what? When you guys listen to our show on the radio or listen to us on YouTube or Facebook... That is all it is, guys and gals. It's entertainment. It is not meant to spread gospel. Crap, half the things I probably say a, a ton of, or the majority of the audience don't agree with me. Like once, you know, idiot. Well, you know, you talk about politics, you talk about this, that's all about white supremacy. You know, I like, grow the damn up. Grow up. If you're not an adult, you can't have a conversation or you can't listen to other ideals, then take your ass down the road, man. It's not like I'm, uh, you know, crying for subscribers and stuff. You don't like the program? Hit that freaking unsubscribe button from all our platforms. Because your pecker pullers don't affect the way I do the show or the way I think. If you want to be a hater... Be a hater. It's expected. The more haters we get, the better we're doing our job. But to go around and hate on a club because they choose to have who they want in their club or choose how to conduct their business with somebody that everybody uses, I'm going to tell you right now. Every major one percenter club, every major one has some kind of contacts with these CEOs because they got a lot of brothers behind bars. That's why they do it. Now, if they want to throw a patch on them, well, maybe they got some business cooking that you don't know about. The one guy that you're talk that's being talked about all over the freaking radio, all over the platforms, I guess he left one club three years ago. Then he went to another club. So how do you put it on the one club that he left three years ago? You shouldn't be putting it on either one. You know, that's something that you might want to think about when you see all these idiots all over the internet, all over social media, talking their smack, here's what you do. Go to their profiles. 
most of the time they're either fake profiles or you don't see a single damn bike anywhere on their profile. Not a single damn bike. Even on the restricted profiles, you can see if they're a biker or not. Or if they have anything to do with motorcycling whatsoever. ever. But these are the guys that start all the damn problems within the damn motorcycle club scene because they have to have their opinion because society says they are entitled to it. Oh yeah, you can have your own opinion, but at least have the balls to stand behind what you're saying. And I know it's a cliche, oh, you say it on the internet, but you won't say it to their face on the street. Most of the time, that freaking saying's correct. Because you won't see any of these guys with the fake profiles or the fake pages say anything on the street. That's the main reason they don't show their faces. Because they're scared. We call them woofers, man. They woof. That's all they do is woof. Run that damn mouth. Too scared to stand behind what they have to say. Too scared to show who the hell they are. They're cowards, man. They're scary. That's all it is. They are the ones that probably got their asses kicked in high school. And they want to feel important now. They want to feel important, so what better way to do it than running off at the mouth, but hide who you are. I guess you're not too damn important after all, because you can't show your damn face. <laughs> anyway, don't forget that show is coming September 1st. It will be in the evenings, and we will be talking about all kinds of stuff, not just biker stuff. Uh, yes, we will have the Motorcycle uh, Madhouse Morning Mayhem. This is that show every day, uh, 8 a.m. Central Standard Time. And then at nighttime, man, giving you a lot to listen to, a lot of opinions, and uh, you're always welcome to uh, give me those uh, your thoughts on it. And if you want to come on the show, we need to debate, hey, that's what this show is about. So with that, I'll talk to you guys later. You have a good one, man. So you want to know how to support the show? Go over to our support store and get some awesome looking clothing. We got rock on hats, rock on shirts, the rock on hats are embroidered get your exclusive merchandise now rock on don't forget to go over to harleyliberty.com get all your motorcycle club news what's happening in the scene we have a new article or articles every single day over at harleyliberty.com and don't forget the sister site bikerlifestylemagazine.com if you're into all that kind of manufacturer motorcycle and news motorcycle rallies and bikers help in the community motorcycle club editorials and more and don't forget to visit us on facebook get involved in the conversation watch videos done a motorcycle madhouse and more also we have instagram yes instagram we have material that is not seen anywhere else so don't forget get on our platforms check out your daily biker news rock on Hey guys, this is Kara from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. I just want to let you know about a place where you can get the greatest apparel, top of the notch, all about baggers, bikers, and brotherhood. And ladies, don't you worry, we didn't forget about you. Check it out at baggersyndicatecycles.com. Yo show is now available on Spotify and all major platforms including iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, and more. Don't forget to become a subscriber on any one of these platforms so you can be notified right away when our weekly episode is uploaded so you never miss an episode. Hi, this is James Hollywood Machikari. Join our YouTube channel and get Motorcycle Madhouse and tons of videos related to the bikers. Join now by subscribing for free and become part of the crowd today. Always free and always entertaining. Don't forget to visit us at www.harleyliberty.com for your daily biker news. Rock on!